Hello. All right. I'm um, recording this on my uh, Pantex Q. So it's probably make a good video, and I'm also getting double audio on my iPod just in case. So I um, don't know if that was good enough to work. We'll see. But the audio on the Q might be good enough. It's not too windy. So today I'm going to show you this. My new toy, which you probably saw in the title, it's a Minox spy camera. I've got the second version, the B. And um, we've got some accessories, some film for it. I'm just resetting the image counter, which unfortunately, this is the literally the only way to do it. Okay, so first we'll do some accessories. Show you the accessories I'm going to show you today. I've got this. This is the Minox tripod and mount. You had to, I think you had to buy these separately. I had to buy them separately. So the Minox can go in there. And then it's a really cool tripod. You take the leg out, you put it into the next one, you take this out, put it into the next one. There you go. You have a little tabletop tripod. And um, if you take out the last one, got yourself a short um, shutter release and then you can take your Minox uh, it should fit all three of them but I this is just the version I have and you pop the bottom off and then as you can see and this will one of the cool things is is this tripod itself works with any type of camera that uses the standard size but but that's okay. So then you can put your Minox in. Uh, oh, the other way. Lock it down in there. It's in. And then this will go over the shutter release when it's pulled out. And then you can take your little shutter release cable, screw that in there, and fire the shutter on a tripod. And it can roll sideways. So you can shoot it sideways too. And um, I think you turn this, you tighten, you turn this to like tighten down the knob, or tighten down the ball, which is all pretty cool. Cool little accessory. Neat little, neat little gads, giz, gizmo. I'm gonna put this back in, because if I lose that, I will be sad. That's in the right spot. That is. And, um,. So, this is the second one, so it has a light meter. You just point it and press the button, and it releases a very tiny little needle, which you're probably not going to be able to see. Uh, with my finger over it, you can see it's low, and then with my finger off of it, it should go up. And um, that tells you what, um, so you can actually rotate the shutter speed, and you want to rotate it till the, till the thing is pointing at it. And uh, pointing at the line it lines up with, and that tells you, well, that that's how you um, actually set the shutter speed, which is cool. And then you can also set the distance. Now, one thing it also, another thing it has, which I really like, once I put this back in, so it has um, focal distances ranging from eight inches to six feet, and then infinity. And on here, that is the focal length at eight inches then that's the second third fourth and if you go all the way out which is kind of hard to do with this but if you go all the way out to the end that's two feet and then you have to guess before between two and six and then otherwise you can set it to infinity which is really cool so if you're doing close-up shots which it does pretty well at you actually can get up to eight inches and you have exactly how far away from your target to point your camera very neat. Um, now, film. I ordered some. This is the film. I'm pretty sure this is, um, it's a color 100. I'm pretty sure it's just portrait 100 that's been uh, cut down. You can cut it down at home yourself if you have a dark room and the, you can get the cutter online, which is really cool. Um, so it's color 100, so in we're going to set it. So in order to set it, you want to set your shutter speed to 100 and then as you can see I've actually already set it and then you want to open it up and then open it up all the way 
to loading film, which you had to open it up, and then each time you open it, you advance the film. You have to stick a finger in there, and then it opens up all the way. And then now that the um, this and this have been decoupled, you then want to... Oh, actually, I set that backwards. You want to set the shutter speed so that this is at 100, and then once you decouple it, then set this to 100, but mine was already set that way, and that'll set your light value. Then the film goes in here, and it's a cartridge film, kind of like a very tiny 110 film. And there it is. The first shot is always exposed. It's right there. That, right there, that is the size of the negative. And um, it's very cool. There's only one company, I think, that makes this. Maybe a couple, but I got it from one company. So then you want to... Right, just the battery died as I was loading the film. But I didn't get the film fully loaded, so... pretty sure that means that after I got the film loaded, I showed you how to take a picture, and I took a picture of that thing, which we'll do again. So, I'm pretty sure I've already explained the beads, and I'm pretty sure I might have guessed. No, I didn't. So I'm guessing that that's three feet away. But now that I've taken a picture, I'm actually going to go a little less than three feet, because it might be closer than three feet. So to take a picture, you just pull it out. You want to get a measurement, and that will tell you here on top about what to set your um, shutter speed to, which I have set my, set my shutter speed to that, it's uh, just, just below a, a thousandth of a second, and you measure your distance or your guess, and you just point, and pulling out, the act of pulling out sets the shutter. Uh, you don't want to get your fingers in front of that bad boy, and you point and shoot, and it took a picture, and you close it back up. Now. I probably also somewhere in here talked about how the um, shutter release for this is cool because usually shutter releases are quite long and this one's quite short and it works for all of my 35 millimeter cameras so the film for this I think is Porsche 100 and I think I can get it developed locally because it's just Porsche 100 cut into smaller pieces you can cut your own um, I might be repeating myself my bad but you can cut your own if you want, but I think they'll develop it. If not, I'll get it developed online. But if I get it developed where I bought it from, it's going to be $8 to develop it, but $40 to get scans, which means I'm not going to get scans, which means I'll have to get my own scans. Now, I might make a second video where I get a set of accessories, um, specifically a projector. And I have a slide cutter already that cuts uh, the film down into slide size. Well, well, it cuts it down into individuals where you can then put it into a slide. And then I could scan the slides, which... Um, I think they're the same size as 35 millimeter slides, so scanning them would be easy. I'm looking at getting a, a film scanner flatbed style, which would be really cool. Um, yeah. You can see my pictures on Twitter. So um, I do 35 millimeter, 120, uh, 110, and um, these. And um, it'll be a while before they're ready, though. Either way, so it'll it'll be a while, but that's okay. Um, it's kind of fun, and I'm also probably not going to shoot these very quick. So um, let's put it away now that I've taken my picture. And um, uh, it's just more for fun than really anything because it's very small. But yeah. Um, some over there just made a noise. I know I probably talked about other things, but I don't remember. And that's all right. You saw me take a picture. I definitely showed how to do the settings and... Um, I know my counter is off, but that's okay. The light meter, and it also has a flash sync, but I think it would be kind of silly to get a flash for it. Plus, I think the flash for it uses individual flash release, the flash bulb, which means you have to keep buying them. So I'll probably just use it for outside shooting, close-up shooting, stuff like that. Um, it'll be a while before they're ready anyways, which is cool. Um, And uh, that's pretty much it. That's the Minox until I get a projector and um, all of that. I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm, which projector I'm going to go for because I think there's two of them, but I think only one of them is a... I would actually want the Minox branded one that actually came out when this came out, which is cool. There's also a few other accessories. There's a development tank that you can get so you can develop at home, which I might actually do. I try to avoid self-developing, but the chemical amounts you use are so small for Minox that I think it would be safe. Um, the slides and projectors, I really do, I want to do that either way, and, um, 
that's pretty much it. Uh, check out my Twitter. Uh, links are probably in the description if you want to see my pictures. I try to upload daily, but I usually don't. But I do upload pictures that I take. I'm waiting on some 110. I have some 35 to upload. I have another roll of 35 that I need to scan because the scans that they gave me were... Um, well, actually, the scans that they gave me were, good, were correct, but the film didn't take correctly, so it all ran together. So I need to rescan it myself and then just, like make some pick where because it, it the the film didn't advance correctly in the old uh harry potter camera that i've probably shown or maybe not and um, so they were all smushed together which is it turned out to be kind of neat but um i still need to i need to take those scans again myself and i have a scanning system all set up and we'll see hopefully i'll be able to use that to also scan these i scan them with my phone which is why i got a newer phone not new but newer and um yeah that's it minox spy camera so I didn't really give great detail. So this is an actual spy camera. It was um, made in uh, 48, this version, the second version. There was a version made before that and a version made after that. And I might end up with the version made after that too. It's a little harder to find because less of them were made, but it takes a battery. So it's a little bit more automatic. It's a little bit bigger, mostly longer, but I still think it would be cool to have, depending how accessible the film is itself, because buying it wasn't too expensive. Getting it developed isn't too expensive, but if I can get it developed locally, it would be even better. But getting the scans might be difficult, and if it's impossible, then it'll be expensive because I'll have to pay someone to do it, or I'll have to find a scanning device that can do it, and maybe I can do that eventually, I'll hope. But um, we'll see. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all later. Bye.